Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's Drayson uh, live stream, uh, our live training that we do on Thursday at 7 p.m. So tonight is going to be a little bit different um, because this well, the last couple of weeks we've been out and about. So it, it, nice to see you at the installer show if you did manage to get along. Uh, but as part of me being out and about, I've actually been on site uh, and I was able to be involved with the commissioning of uh, a mixed heating system. And that's really what tonight's uh, live stream is going to be about, is how we manage uh, heating systems that have got a mixture of underfloor heating, uh, radiator circuits, and indeed that can be extended through to things like electrical heating as well. So uh, if you've got any questions as we go through, I'm going to run a little short video in a minute um, that, that sort of takes you through what we did, and then we'll come back in the room. If there's any questions, uh, I'll go through them. Uh, so just post them as we go. Uh, this will also go up on to uh, the, the group and also to YouTube afterwards, so you can have plenty of opportunities uh, to to, to, to catch up on this if you can't make it when it's live. But like I say, any questions that you add now or indeed if you tag the video afterwards, uh, we can always come back and, and answer them. So without further ado, let me let me roll this, uh, this stream and uh, let me know what you think. And like I say, once this is done, this runs for about 10 minutes. Um, we'll come back in. Any questions, we'll, we'll deal with them then. Northampton at a site where we've got a mixed heating system. We've got underfloor heating downstairs and we've got a radiator circuit upstairs. I'm going to go in and commission the system. Let's go and have a look. So here we have the position of the underfloor heating manifold. So you can see here we've got the Wiser underfloor heating controller above and then below we've got the manifold. This close-up here shows you the uh, thermal actuators. So these are actually Drayton TS Ultras, they don't have to be, they just need to be 230 volt, 5 watt thermal actuators uh, and these are on the respective loops. Now some of these uh, zones have multiple loops and you can see the labels on the little green key ring above. And then if we look at the actual underfloor heating controller, you can see where the thermal actua actuators wire back to. So we've got six zones that are actually being in use, but we're not using all 14 thermal actuators. Uh, we are using the pump control, so there's a live in and a live out for the pump, uh, and the underfloor heating controller will control pump overrun. And we're also using the interlock, uh, which is going off to fire a zone valve to permit flow into the underfloor heating manifold and also fire the boiler. A really useful installer feature is that you can fire the underfloor heating zones without using the app. So by using this second button, press and hold, and then you can scroll through and pick the zones that you want to fire. So here I've picked zone three, and then carry on right to the end, and you can see that that zone then fires. It flashes to tell you that it's uh, on an override and then a further press of the button will stop the core for heat. Now let's have a look at the hub in the airing cupboard upstairs. So this is plumbed as a three zone system with three zone valves, one for underfloor heating, one for hot water and one for central heating and these are wired back to a wiring centre which is connected to a three channel wiser hub. The hub also has override buttons that allows you to fire the respective channels without using the app. A three second press of the button gets into override mode and a further click of the button stops the core for heat. We can now commission the system using the Wiser Home app. Firstly, hit the getting started button and then pick the region and choose the Wiser Hub R. This will then tell you to press the setup button and this is so that we can initiate the soft access point to allow the phone to connect to the Wiser Hub R. Back in the app, we can now progress through and follow the prompts to access our Wi-Fi settings. So the button will automatically take us to our settings page of the phone. Head over to the Wi-Fi settings and we're looking for an access point called Wiser. Click on that and wait for it to stabilize. And once it's stable, we can then background our settings foreground the Wiser Home app and the continue button will then liven up and allow us to progress into the settings page. First job is to set the fuel type based on the heat source that we're using. So here you can have anything from gas, oil, electric or heat pump. We're using a gas boiler so I'll set gas and progress on it now asks us if we want to set up our Wi-Fi. Now this is very much in the customer's domain, so we can skip that. And then it will ask us if we want to set up devices, which we do. So we hit next, and that takes us to the landing page where we can add our first device. 
As this system is using the Wiser underfloor heating controller, we need to add this device first. So we pick it from the list. It then asks us to confirm that it's powered. We click next and this puts the hub into join mode. We then need to press and hold the setup button on the underfloor heating controller to get the device into join mode. And this is shown with the alternating orange and green flashing. And then after a couple of seconds, the device will join and this is confirmed with the burst of green flashing. Returning to the app, we need to give the controller a name, which is essentially addressing it. So here it is going into the utility room, save the name, and then we need to choose what our output is going to be, whether it's going to be the relay within the underfloor heating controller or one of the options in the Wiser hub. We're now ready to add the first room thermostat. So we can begin by picking it from the list and that will put the hub into join mode. And then we need to put the batteries into the back of the thermostat. So pop the battery covers off. Two AA alkaline batteries. Make sure you insert them the right way around. On with the battery covers. And as soon as the room thermostat powers up, it will also go into join mode. Give it a couple of seconds to see the hub and it will join. Now give this thermostat a name. So it's going to go into the kitchen diner. So we'll type that in. And then once we've done that, we need to assign it to one of the channels on the underfloor heating controller. So first pick that the control type is underfloor heating, and then that gives you another drop down menu where you can pick the appropriate channel. So this one is going to be on channel three and submit the changes. So that's the first thermostat added, which is for the kitchen. We can now go through and repeat this for the remaining underfloor heating zones. Let's head into the master bedroom to get this first Wiser Smart Radiator Thermostat fitted to the system. So the first thing we need to do when we're fitting the Wiser Smart Radiator Thermostat is to insert the batteries as this opens the valve. So batteries in, cover back on, and after a couple of seconds you'll get the red indicator and you'll feel that the plunger inside will start to withdraw. And then after a few more seconds, you'll get calibration mode, which is red and blue with amber in the middle. You now need to pick the appropriate valve adapter. There's two supplied in the box. So here we're using the M30 by one and a half. So screw that onto the valve body and then screw the, the actuator onto the adapter. Make sure it's all nice and tight. And then if you want to get the LEDs to face the front, just loosen off the locking ring and spin it around and then re-tighten the locking ring. So you want to make sure at this stage that everything is nice and rigid. Onto the app again, we now pick a radiator thermostat from our list and that will put the hub into join mode. So we now need to put the radiator valve into join mode. This is done by holding the cap over to the plus until we see the pulsing green light. And after a couple of seconds, it will see the hub and join the network. So now you've got red and blue flashing. So you're in calibration mode with green in the middle, meaning you're joined. So the app confirms that we've successfully joined the network and it then asks us where the radiator valve is located. So I'll type in master bedroom and then we get to choose, because this is a three channel hub, we get to choose which channel the radiator thermostats are assigned to. And the final step on the commissioning journey is to hit the setup button to stop the green light flashing and stop the soft access point. So there you go, that's, uh, that's how we commissioned uh, quite an extensive system there using wet underfloor heating and uh, a radiator circuit upstairs. Now, if they'd had any uh, electrical heating loads, so if there was any panel radiators, then we of course could use the uh, electrical heat switch. And since launching the probe, the, uh, the, the limit stat that goes with the electrical heat switch, we can now also cater for electric underfloor heating as well. So it's, it really can use Wiser for quite complex systems now. 
Uh, just have a quick look and see if there are any questions that have come in. I can see there's one here uh, with regards to uh, the underfloor heating controller. Uh, what happens if we've got if we need more than six zones? Well, each hub. So remember, you need to have a hub. So whatever you're going to do with underfloor heating or radiators, you're always going to have a wiser hub at the center of the system. And a wiser hub can support up to three separate underfloor heating controllers. And that's why when I added that. I had to give it a name. I, I called it utility room, but that's just so that if we have more than one, we can differentiate between them based on essentially their location. Um, but you can have up to three of them. So that can, you, you remember you've got your 16 zones, so 16 virtual zones that you can assign. Um, and if, if you use uh, the three, you, up, up to three of the underfloor heating controllers, that gives you, uh, again, you, you'd max out all of your zones on underfloor heating. So you need to be a bit careful how you get your you know how you get the things divvied up but if you just wanted to do underfloor heating you could do by adding three uh, separate underfloor heating controllers to the system and then each each one of those you would you have an you'd assign room thermostats and point them at uh, the respective zones on the underfloor heating controller so that's how you could do more than just six if you've got a, a large uh, manifold that you're trying to uh, trying to accommodate uh, any more questions? Let's just give it a couple of seconds. Uh, just to give you a bit more detail on device limits now. So 16 virtual zones, that hasn't changed since we launched. You can have 64 devices now. Now, the hub counts as one, so that's essentially 63 other devices that you can have, and those can be made up of a combination of three underfloor heating controllers. You can have 16 electrical heat switches, you can have uh, 16 room thermostats, so no, no more than one room thermostat per zone. Uh, and the balance then can be made up with um, the, with the smart radiator thermostat. So it's really got quite good scope for being able to, to accommodate really quite large systems uh, of, of different sort of heating methods. Just see if there's any more questions that are coming in. Nothing seems to be... Um, at the moment uh, so that just, in the meantime I'll, let me just tell you about uh, our nine degree network so obviously you're all nine degree network members already have a look over at the academy um so if you if you log in you've got essentially the shop or you've got the drayton academy make sure you've done all your modules there if you want to become wiser approved there's also modules there for digistat and just to give you a heads up there's going to be uh, some modules coming up for our auto balancing valve so you may or may not know that we've launched uh, an auto balancing valve with the TRV4 and the RT414. So that a module will be appearing there uh, fairly shortly, uh, just taking you through how you actually go about setting that up. Last call, really, to see if there are any questions about this or indeed any other um, anything else that regarding what you've seen tonight or more generally with Wiser. Uh, Oh, there's a question here about the channel arrangement. So when you are when you fit the underfloor heating controller, you've got choices. You can either choose that when there's a call for heat on any one of the six thermostats per, uh, per underfloor heating controller, whether that translates into a call for heat at the controller itself. So that means there's a little interlock in there where you can um, you can it's essentially volt free. So you bring a, you bring voltage in and that will switch it. So you, normally that's going to go to a, a a zone valve in, as it did in this case but if you as you saw in in this scenario the zone valves were actually uh remote from where the underfloor heating controller was now when they did the first fix electrical they brought enough cables in that we were able to use the interlock and that was the preferred method of doing it there but if that cable between the underfloor heating controller and the hub is missing you don't have to run that in you can instead elect to have the, the one of the channels in the hub now, if it's a single channel, if it's a single channel hub, there's only one relay that's available. If you're using the three channel, um, you, you've got the choice between channels one and three. So you can choose channel one, channel three, or you can choose the interlock on the underfloor heating controller. So again, nice little thing to be able to do that because it can save you needing to run a wire between where your zone valves are and where the underfloor heating controller is. Right, no further questions. So with that, I'm going to wrap this up. Thanks for joining me, as always, guys. Uh, it's, it's always good to get your feedback as well uh, on what you want to see. So if you've, if, you've, if you've got any ideas of stuff or you want there's, there's information that you think you want to know about, 
Uh, stick it on the comments to the videos. This will find its way up onto the group. It will also end up on YouTube in due course. Um, thanks for joining me tonight, guys. Always a pleasure. I'll catch you on the next one.